I'm Danforth Prince, founder and president of Blood Moon Productions, a New York City-based publishing house that has always had a deep interest in the politics of the entertainment industry. We're coming out, and what I mean by that is we're coming out with a new book about gay and lesbian film. Um, I'm here today to tell you what will be in that book. Uh, the book is entitled uh, 50 Years of Queer Cinema, 500 of the Best GLBTQ Films Ever Made. We were motivated to do this book by the lack of documentation of what's been a radical revolution in the filmmaking industry. It involves the recent flood of gay-themed films sweeping across the internet. Despite rumblings from the religious right, the love that dared not speak its name is now out, provocative and proud. The doors to the celluloid closet have been flung wide open, forced apart with crowbars by some of the world's most daring and avant-garde filmmakers. We've configured this book as the first published documentation of this seismic shift in how America chooses to be entertained. The book is divided into two parts. About half of it is devoted to reviews and analyses of films, each produced since 1960, which contain some kind of gay or lesbian theme or content. The other half of the book is devoted to Hollywood facts, first-time revelations, and icon worship as it applies to the film industry's spin on gay and lesbian love. The book is an irreverent overview of the influence, both overt and covert, of gay people and their aesthetic during 50 seminal years of film production worldwide. It exposes long hidden secrets that virtually everyone in Hollywood wanted to keep firmly locked in a closet. And God knows there were a lot of secrets, at least until now, in a highly sexual industry. Revelations, some of them startling, all of them controversial, absolutely drip from the pages of this book. Its primary author is Darwin Porter, whose exposés of Underbelly Hollywood have already generated notoriety in the form of recent biographies devoted to, among others, Marlon Brando, Merv Griffin, Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, Katharine Hepburn, and Michael Jackson. He's also written two separate overviews of previously unknown episodes associated with the life of Humphrey Bogart and a major documentation about how the Hollywood aviator, billionaire Howard Hughes, flew both ways. Darwin Porter is also the author of what one critic defined as, quote, the most comprehensive compendium of intergenerational gossip ever published, Hollywood Babylon, It's Back, which will be soon followed by its sequel, Hollywood Babylon Strikes Again. One of the many subjects covered in 50 Years of Queer Cinema involves how A-list Hollywood actors both gay and straight, interpreted the gay roles into which they were cast and what they said about them afterwards. There's also coverage of what we define as Hollywood's bad boys and demonic divas, many of them discreet or indiscreet bisexuals themselves. This book tells why they became queer icons. What's surprising to me is the sheer volume and diversity of gay and lesbian cinema today and more and more of them are available on DVD for private viewing in your living room or in your bedroom if you so prefer. This new generation of filmmakers is here. They're queer and they're aggressively defining their place in the cinematic sun, often as independent producers or directors. At least in terms of blockbusters from major studios, queer cinema has come a long way baby. Moving from the then revolutionary boys in the band, through the ridges and valleys of Brokeback Mountain, to San Francisco's activist landscape of Harvey Milk. The 500 films we've selected are as compelling, colorful, diverse, and irreverent as the rainbow flag. They include films about gay cowboys, gay Nazis, nude Marines, lesbian detectives, horny homicidal gay hit squads, as well as documentaries or historical dramas about leading homosexuals, literary, artistic, or political, of the 19th and 20th centuries. Within this vast repertoire of films, queer people are either noble or naughty or something in between. The book focuses on porn stars, women in love with each other, bears, leather men, leather queens, twinks, runaway teens, chicken hawks, queer sadists, bull dykes, lipstick lesbians, muscle fags, gay for pay hustlers, chicks with dicks, 
and aging suicidal Johns. Of course, many films are autobiographical, focusing on coming out stories in the American heartland or in the Deep South, usually areas of homophobia. But many of these dramas are about gay men and women who have long ago emerged from the closet and are having to focus instead on real problems like real people. And just for fun, we've thrown in a lot of boy-on-boy -boy and girl-on-girl -girl love stories. Whatever your brand of queer, whatever your secret fetish, this book explores the infinite possibilities. In our selection of which films got reviewed, we paid close attention to the choices that juries made at gay and lesbian film festivals worldwide. The book includes reviews of lavender-tinged films from outside the United States. We also viewed with keen interest those mainstream films which, although marketed to straight audiences originally, carried strongly suggestive, subliminal, or coded gay and lesbian subplots, characters, or themes. Please don't think that we've gone gaga over every single work of gay film ever produced. During the course of this project, we came across a lot of unfocused, badly conceived gay and lesbian films. We clustered the worst of them into a gossipy section called Dishonorable Discharges, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I'd like to provide some examples of the provocative but little known films this book contains. There's 101 Rent Boys, a 2001 documentary in which independent filmmakers Fenton Bailey and Randy Barbato turn their cameras on a wide spectrum of male hustlers, most of them in their early 20s. The viewer is entertained when they either flash the full Monty or else bare their souls. Some had wives and girlfriends claiming they're only gay for pay. The hustlers appear in the various hues of the rainbow. They include men who resemble a Joe College football type to a Japanese slave master in full fetish drag. This is a film about love for sale, minus the love. Daphne is a 2007 release directed by Claire Beaven. It documents the lesbian involvements of writer Daphne du Maurier, author of Rebecca. This is a biographical drama about du Maurier's unrequited love for Ellen Doubleday, the wife of the famous publisher, and her romantic attachment to Gertrude Lawrence, the famous British actress and confidant of Noel Coward. Then there's Fighting Tommy Riley, a 2005 release from director Eddie O'Flaherty. It's a sweaty, bloody, gritty tale about a martial arts instructor coping with his unrequited love for the boxer he's training. Some critics have referred to it as the gay and out version of Rocky. A 2008 film, Affinity, is a lesbian romance and thriller directed by Tim Fywell that's set in London's Millbank prison during the mid-1800s when convicts awaited their forced emigration to Australia. It's about a grieving upper-class Victorian woman who signs up as a, quote, lady visitor and configured by the prison as a moral example for the female inmates. A love affair with a surprise ending develops between herself and a particularly psychic female prisoner. A worthy documentary is The Men Who Danced, the story of Ted Shawn's male dancers. Between 1933 and 1940, Ted Shawn was defined as the father of American dance, directly influencing disciples who included Martha Graham. He chose masculine dancers with impressive genitals and revealing costumes. He once even stated in print that all male dancers should, on the stage, appear fully nude. A final example is Hope Along the Wind, the story of Harry Hay. Hay was the patriarch of the gay rights movement, founding the much persecuted Mattachine Society in an era when homosexuality was illegal, punishable with fines, public exposure, or even imprisonment. His is just one of the many heroes, gay or lesbian, whose cinematic biographies are highlighted within this book. Fifty years of queer cinema has it all. Hundreds of film reviews, dozens of Hollywood secrets spilled, and a spin on Hollywood that you won't find anywhere else. I'll see you at the movies. Thank you very much 